Ever since the day of Pentecost, the gospel has been preached and followed by miracles, signs, and wonders. Today's guest has a passion to activate believers into evangelism and supernatural ministry. Jamie Rao is with us today to share about all that and his ministry to those in the film and entertainment business. All this coming up on Lifeline Today. Welcome to Lifeline Today. I'm glad you've tuned into the broadcast. We're going to have some great discussion here today, but yes. I want to remind you that the Prayer Center is open. You can call now, and uh, you can call, and uh, our Prayer Center will be there take your call, and many times the phones get busy. So, uh, Joan, we have a very special guest here today. His name is Jamie Rowe. Welcome to the program. Or Rao. It's Rao. Rao. <laughs> yeah. You're an award-winning producer, screenwriter, filmmaker. Uh, reaches and impacts the film and entertainment industry through light and film ministry. That's pretty interesting. Yeah. And you have a passion to empower Christians to operate in signs, wonders, and healings. So this is really interesting. You have both uh, measures of ministry going on here, Jamie. Yeah, yeah. It's been uh, it's been uh, it's been amazing to see what the Lord has done through starting off just with you know wanting to reach the people in the film industry and then getting the revelation that wait a minute. These people aren't going to actually know that he's real unless you show the, them mm -hmm. that he is real. So what initially gave you the heart for the film and entertainment ministry? Uh, I got the heart because uh, I've, I've been in the business since 1994 on all sorts of different levels, from acting to uh, producing and directing and from even working as a PA and all sorts of stuff and uh, within, the, within the business. And then as... as um, I saw the destruction behind the scenes wow. and the, the divorce rate is in the 90 percentile, like is divorce rate and, and uh, the suicide rate. And, I, and I'm literally watching my friends' lives like die, like, wow. like literally. Um, I got a friend who went to 12 funerals one, in one summer with one of the unions in the film business and nine of them were suicide. Wow. So, I, I, so what gave me the heart for it was as the Lord changed my heart, later on in life, in my, in my 30s, um, my heart started to break for them because I could relate. And I remember watching that, mm -hmm. uh, what the destruction that was going on uh, behind tough the business. scenes. Yeah. It's a tough business. And so of it course, has... you were a Christian yeah. in that yes. industry. But I didn't know how to pipe up. Yeah. Because I had the answer, right? Yeah. Being Jesus. But, I, uh, but without, the, without me, myself, even being discipled and, uh -huh. in the sense of, of, of realizing... Like it's it's hard to preach the gospel if you really if you if you don't actually have an intimate relationship with Jesus. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you're just doing everything out of fear and. If you flesh. don't have the all, all the answers yourself, well, yeah. I, you don't have to have them all, but you have to have a few. Yeah. Right. One or two. <laughs> <laughs> One or two. So, yeah. But for my understanding, you're primarily you you travel like an itinerant minister. Yes. And so you preach in churches and minister and do seminars and that kind of thing. But you're also involved with film and production? Yeah. Um, that, that's recent, most recently, just actually being involved in film and production. Um, as the Lord has, like the, uh, six years ago, the Lord gave me a vision for this ministry. And it was really long and really, it was really long, all these different things. And mm -hmm. it started off with just the Lord telling me to be a chaplain to the industry. But that backfired really fast. As fast as I got the idea, as fast as I got turned away. Because the industry didn't want a guy like me representing a religion in their in their eyes, yeah, right? right? You know what I mean? So, so then that's when we got inspired. We're like, okay, you know what? Um, we're seeing what some of the things they're doing in Hollywood. And we're like, hey, why don't we do that in Canada mm -hmm. where they had these underground churches? And so we planted what an underground... What do you mean by that, underground church well, in Hollywood? Yeah, so an underground church for Hollywood is it's invite only, um, uh, no autographs, no cameras, no social media. So no well-known individuals feel free to go? Yes, Okay. What we're finding is that if you're super well-known or even if you're not, um, they have a hard time doing community and doing life with mm. uh, people who aren't in that business. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I mean, I've had numerous actresses say to me, oh, yeah, I had a little, little old lady tell me that uh, me acting is just the gateway to porn, you know, things like that, right? So um, they won't, and so when they hear that kind of stuff, they don't want to come to church. 
you know, yeah. and, and so I decided, okay, let's, let's create a community so that it's safe, Right, we For all them. get it. We all understand. We're all artists, and it's and you won't be you won't. There's no schmoozing allowed either. No one's allowed to handle business cards mm. and things like that. Just come and be, be who you are, and you're gonna you're gonna be loved on by us, and you're also gonna hear the gospel. You know, this makes a lot of sense because that would be the mm. culture of Hollywood, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah, a lot of that going on and oh, yeah. posturing and yeah. who's who and getting to know who's who and hey, can you help me get a role and yeah. so on. And so they need to be in a place where none of that's going on. Exactly. So they can actually hear the gospel. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, so we did that. We did it in Vancouver and then we planted one in Montreal and then in Calgary and then uh, Toronto just this year. Now, now, do you oversee these or do you have people in these different uh, cities that are sort of overseeing them? Yeah, so I, at the beginning, I, over, I, I oversee all of them with an apostolic role, right? Mm -hmm. um, in Vancouver, I was there in Vancouver for, for, and I was essentially running that one for, for years. And then when I moved here to Alberta, that's when the Lord kind of just took me away from the underground. So now I have a leadership team in, in every city that actually run it. And, and uh, we communicate every week and make sure they're good. And, and Kind of uh, interesting because it has to stay under the wire. Yeah, you know, you have to kind of be in obscurity, sort of, yeah. if it's going to be effective at all, right? Exactly. And of course, well. everybody would love to say, "Hey, we're doing this and this," but you can't do that. Yeah. Oh, I know. And the, the temptation. There's other ministries and other things that do that. And they they advertise it and stuff like yeah. that. And that's you know that's good. And the Lord told me that they'll receive their reward, but but I'm just going to be obedient in whatever yeah, the Lord's telling exactly. me to do, right? And and, exactly. and they're thankful. And that's what I get the most from these people when they come. They're like, "Thank you for doing this," and thank you that you've never asked me for money, mm -hmm. that you never, because everyone always wants, because when you're in the business, you make a lot of money. Mm -hmm. You can be at the bottom of the business and you make a lot of money. And so they're always asking for their time, their talents, and their treasures from, the, from mm -hmm. them. And yeah. they come to a place where none of that is ever, wow. we actually give. I'll give them stuff, right? And they don't even know how to, they don't know how to be a generous receiver. <laughs> wow. Isn't that So we're something? trying to teach them that. Yeah. That's an yeah. interesting, very just, interesting ministry. I just want to jump ahead a little bit, because we'll talk about your books again sure. at the end of the program. But you have written... I see you've got with you three yes. uh, devotional books. And do you distribute these in amongst these uh, underground churches? And uh, are these people using the devotional books? Let, let's just hear about what they are. Because I was a little yeah. surprised when I started looking at them. I thought, oh, lots of lines here. <laughs> yeah, lots of lines, yeah. We, we leave lots of room for you to, to work it out with the Lord. So what, yeah. the, one of the things, that the, the, the number one issue that we have within, within believers in the film industry is that God's not number one. Mm. They think God's number one, but the fruit shows that they'll either practice and for an audition or they'll go to a film industry function before they'll do anything, come to a church meeting or read a book or hear a message. They'd rather do the industry, but they'll talk like God's number one, but then they struggle. And so, mm. uh, so what we're, we're, we're trying to help them say, listen, if you would just give everything to God, everything, watch what happens, I dare you. Wow. Because... Uh, we, so that I have a sleuth. We had 25 interns at one point within our ministry, and every single, nearly every single one of them put God number one. And the fruit of their life now is like insane. The lives that they're changing, the the, the jobs they're getting, the favor that's on their life because they put Him first and the industry second. Mm. And so this, these books, they actually help. That's the point. One of them is called Identity because. It's the industry. A lot of people don't know who they are, right? Well, for and sure. So let's just let's just walk through the Bible every day, mm. one verse a day, and then. You know, here's the scripture. Uh, how does this apply? Um, what, what did you observe? And, and, and then pray and then, and then work it out between mm -hmm. you and him. Even if it takes you five minutes or it takes you an hour, however long. And so, yeah, that's the point is just to get them so, reading the Bible. Right? Yeah, and just little snippets at a time. Yeah. But then they've got all of this space to write down what they're feeling, to journal. Yeah. And uh, for God to speak to them, for them to speak to God in that process. You know, exactly. it does always come back down to the same thing for believers, is that we need to be in the Word of God. Absolutely. We need to be, uh, <laughs> yeah. well, we call, it used to be called a devotional life, which yeah. meant you took time to read the Bible, to pray, yeah. and, and then to listen to God, because He'll speak to you in your spirit. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, it's amazing how every generation seems to have to be told and taught that again to really discover yeah. your personal relationship with the Lord. Exactly. You know, that's uh, powerful, and it's powerful to hear what you're doing in this industry, and I'm sure it's challenging. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what? We want to come back and talk to you about another aspect of your ministry, sure. and that is your passion to activate 
the church in signs and wonders yeah. and miracles. Yeah. And you personally, I know, do seminars, don't you? Yeah. yeah. And uh, your passion to do that. And we'll talk about why that's important uh, when we come back right after this. Help change the spiritual climate of Canada by partnering financially with Lifeline Today with Dick and Joan and share in the breakthrough anointing that's on this ministry. Partner $25 a month and receive as a thank you gift Dick DeWert's powerful audio message on CD entitled Realize Your Dream and learn how to find your God-given purpose and see breakthroughs in your life. Partner at $50 a month and we'll send you Dick DeWert's latest audio teaching, The Power of the Anointing plus this distinctive vial of anointing oil from the Holy Land for use in prayer for healing, consecration, protection, and worship. Partner at $100 a month and receive the CDs, anointing oil, plus this special leather-bound journaling Bible personally signed with a note of encouragement by Joan DeWert. Your tax-deductible donation will strengthen this ministry and make a difference in our nation. Call today and say yes to becoming a partner with Dick and Joan. Phone 403-942-0123 or email info at dickandjoan.com today. In Luke 5, 17, it says the Lord's healing power was strongly with Jesus. Have you ever noticed that before? That word strong here means it's invincible. It's incapable of being defeated, incapable of being subdued or lowered in intensity or strength. Do you hear what this word is saying to you today? As strong as the healing power of God was on Jesus as he walked the earth 2,000 years ago, it is still as strong today. It hasn't changed. He hasn't changed. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's here for you now. We're here for you also right now in the prayer center. Give us a call, whatever you need. Telephone prayer partners are standing by. Call 403-942-0123. Jamie Rao is with us, and he is a itinerant ministry, but you have a passion for activating people in signs, wonders, healings, uh, really the supernatural, yeah. which is a normal Christianity, actually. Amen. And you know what? I'm just really impressed to hear that because uh, there seems to be a generation in about your age group that are moving away from that uh, in the church I'm talking yeah. about. And so I'm really encouraged to see someone like you with a passion to activate this. Yeah. So tell us about this ministry. Yeah, so uh, you're right. You're, you're absolutely right. There. My generation has just gone away from it. We've tried to be so relevant to keep up with the world that we're turning into the world in the church. <laughs> and what's happened is we've forgotten about the signs, wonders, and miracles, everything that Jesus did and that we could do more, right? And we read that and we're going, what the heck? Like, why aren't we seeing these things, you know? And yeah. then when I saw it for the first time in my life, when I actually saw someone get healed, I was like, what? I want to do that. Yeah, like, exactly. Can you tell me about that? How old were you? What, what was the story? I was... And that was in 2014. Wow. 2014, really? yeah. And I watched the movie um, with uh, Todd White in it. Yeah. And yeah, I yeah. was like, I just weeped. And, I, and that was the moment for me. I'm like, I knew there was more to this life yeah. as a Christian than what I'm living in right now. I knew yeah. there was more. And so I just went hard after that. Not to be like him, but yeah. hard. I'm like, God, I want this. And it says in the Bible to, to eagerly long for these, like, yeah. the yeah. spiritual gifts, right? Earnestly mm -hmm. desire. Yeah, spiritual earnestly gifts. desire them, right? And so that was what I did. I'm like, I want healing. I want healing. Not so that it could be about me. I just wanted the tool in my belt just to, to enhance ministry and to, to I, I, this, looking at the people's responses to seeing people from being sick to not sick in a yeah. second blows your mind, Yeah. right? And so all of a sudden now he's really real. It brings him alive, doesn't it? Exactly. It brings Jesus alive. It's, Amen. it's more than just word or paper, yeah. but when you see someone actually be healed or set free or yeah. delivered from yeah. a demon, exactly. wow, yeah. God is alive, he's here. Or even prophecy. I yeah. think I remember the first time you heard a prophecy <laughs> <laughs> when we were first saved and somebody belted out, thus says the Lord. He said it scared him half to death, but he knew Jesus was yeah. in the room. Yeah. And that's what we want to do, you isn't know, it? I was raised in a, in a good church, Bible-believing <laughs> church, but pretty traditional. Yeah. So when I heard that, I was shook to the core. I'm like, whoa, he's in the room. Oh, no, I better, what am I doing? I better behave. You know, and had cigarettes, better yeah, hide them. Yeah, you, know, yeah, yeah. you know, you just, uh, I was much younger. Yeah. It was before I was really 
saved and filled with the Holy Spirit. But it says in the Word that the Word should be sign, uh, followed by signs and wonders oh, right. and healings. Yeah. And that is what solidifies the reality yeah. of Jesus, who mm. he is and what he does. So exactly. tell us about that, though. What, how yeah. do you do this? Yeah, exactly. So what, what, what happened was is I had a, uh, so I had this encounter. I saw it after it. I started seeing miracles left, right, and crazy. Wow. This is the wildest things. And this is while I was in ministry, uh, within the film industry. And then I had, then I had actors come up to me and say, hey, um, I hate my life. And I don't like how I live it, but I watch what you do and I want I want what you have how did how did you get this mm. and they, and then it was an that was an eye opener for me going oh they don't really care what I say they're watching me right yeah. and so then from there I literally a month later I had 25 interns right after that guy said that because it was a revelation they're watching me okay wow. how did I do that well I'm going to keep doing what I've been doing and you guys can come along with me yeah. right and then all of a sudden so what I did so because we started seeing miracles then I started getting invite invites mm -hmm. uh, from churches of course and then so what I would do is I say yeah I'll come but I have I have to bring a team with me and so what I did is I brought the film industry with me hmm. and then so then as we would do it I was teaching them how to do it too at the yeah. same time so now so now I'm discipling them. when you say do it praying for people seeing exactly healing yeah. prophesying I, I would give them an opportunity to hey that person over there give them a word Mm -hmm. You know, and put wow. them on the spot, right? And and challenge them, stretch their faith muscle a bit, right? <laughs> and uh, and but so yeah, then all of a sudden it just turned into discipleship. So this other ministry that I have, influence and love, has turned into it's an itinerant ministry. But I bring the film ministry with me as discipleship. So it's not even for me personally. It's not about it's not about the like being the, the itinerant speaker. It's about actually training and activating people. So do you go out on the streets? Is that what you're talking about? Bringing them with you? Do you go out yeah, on the do. streets, or do you do meetings that you're invited to? Well, this would be more a seminar. You do. Or... We do both. Yeah, both. yeah. We'll do like okay. a influence and love seminar where we do teach all these things: how to cast out demons, how to hear God's voice so you can prophesy, how to heal the sick, how to baptize people in the spirit, how to actually pray for people, and then we'll go out two or three times on the streets and watch it happen at Walmart or wherever wow. we go, and we'll get in teams and we'll do that. Mm -hmm. and it's like a, it's like a, like a faith booster, right? It's a Kickstarter and the real Christian life, how we should be, right? We're just we were Christians 24-7, not just on mm -hmm. Sunday, right? And mm -hmm. this is so good because a lot of people would like to do those things or would like to see the signs and wonders, but they don't know how. Yeah. They just don't know how to operate exactly. in them themselves. So I'm, I'm going to come from the perspective of a person who's never done this before, yeah. and that would be the ones you said, hey, come along, and you're going to pray for the sick. Now, yeah. how do they, what's the response of the person who says, well, I've never done this before, and... And you thrust them into praying for somebody, now pray mm -hmm. for a word or for healing. Yeah. Uh, tell me that process. How do they, what happens to them? Well, it always starts with fear. Yeah. <laughs> it's always fear. Yeah. And so the, my main, the mandate that I like with this is if I can demystify the fear, right? If I can demystify the, the fear, because if we do anything outside of faith, it's sin, right? And the mm -hmm. opposite of faith is fear. So if I can go, hey, guys, here's, I have this amazing message called how the, how the world really f uh, feels. And then I sh share what the Bible says about how the world feels and then testimonies, just being around and out and about on some of how they've responded when you've actually approached people uh, mm -hmm. with the power of God. And uh, with that, I would hope that just a little bit more, you give you enough confidence to go, okay, well, I'm going to try it. And it's always hard the first time, especially if you haven't done it. But, uh, but I'm always there. There's a, or, or another leader of mine is always going to be there to help walk through it. And, and if they say something silly, then we can correct it and, or whatever. But, and then we just teach as we do it. But we do it together, right? It's not just like you sit down, you learn, and then here you go. Have fun. Go do it on your own. No, 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 no. We'll mm -hmm. come with you, right? So uh, do these, <laughs> well, we'll call them interns. They, do they get this <laughs> aha moment where they actually are thrust into praying for somebody and then God meets them? Yeah. And they get a word or they get yeah. an Yeah, because then all of, a sudden, all of a sudden they'll give a word and they're like, and that person's a mess because they just encountered the Lord through the word that they just said. And now they're a mess because they're like, God used me. Oh, my gosh, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, then, and so what that does is like, I can't wait to give the next one. You know what I mean? And so then yeah. it just, and then all of a sudden, then it becomes normal. And yeah. you so, don't even think about it. You know, it. really what I'm hearing you say is that this could, all believers could do this. Amen. But they probably should step out. Yep. <laughs> they may be waiting to before it's really safe, and then, yeah. you know. You That's know. why we do things in the church first, because it's safe. 
This is the safest place awesome. where we can do it, right? That's mm -hmm. why we do our healing schools and things like that. Let's, yeah. let's do it with one another yeah. in the church where it's safe, where brothers and sisters. If you, this is, it's the safest place to fail, and it's the safest place to succeed is it within the family, yeah, right? So let's do it here, and then we'll go out, right? So let's start here, and then we'll, then we'll baby steps, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, tell us some of the stories. Like, you know, the story of one. Who, uh, who uh, is a typical example of, with, of a breakthrough like this that you saw? Yeah, I mean, I mean, we have, we have one that she was deaf and <clears throat> this, and she reached out and uh, and she asked if God was real and I said absolutely and she goes I don't know if that's true and in the midst of me telling that God is real I talked about how Jesus healed the sick and she says well I'm I'm deaf but I don't I don't think I could uh, I was told I'll never be able to hear and so yeah. this is all uh, and she's a sign language uh, yeah uh, young young woman and uh, and I said well try this here pray this and I got her to put her own hands on her own ears as a non-believer yeah okay and I said say this and so you know I command my ears to open up in the name of Jesus so she did that four times on the fourth time she got her hearing back it's and amazing. completely got her set free and then in this in the same moment her like revival broke out in her house and she like um, her father downstairs who was drunk downstairs in her house who was also deaf Mm. comes up and bouncing a ball. Can you hear that? I can hear this ball. His ears got, just because God is so awesome. You, you can't, <laughs> you, don't, you can't even, I don't know what happened. I just know that God's God. And he just did this crazy thing. And then, yes. and, I, and I kid you not, and her leg grew out that was like four inches shorter than the other. She was born that way. Like, and then she goes and gets baptized that night in the lake. Um, on fire for Jesus, lost her job the next day because she kept talking about Jesus. And <laughs> she kept this, so they kicked her. She got fired because she kept, she was so pumped. Obviously, I'm deaf and yeah. leg yeah. and look well, at me now. that happened in the Bible, didn't it? Yep, it sure did, <laughs> it sure right? Did. You, know, you know what I mean? Yeah. It totally sounds like yeah. the Gospels all over again. Yeah, right? it was a book of Acts all over again. And she, you know what she did in two weeks? In two weeks, her and her sister, because her sister was with her and also got saved at the same time. Yeah. Um, in two weeks, they led 400 people to Jesus. That's amazing. Wow. In, yeah, in, in, I can uh, believe in the that. Washington State. Yeah, yeah I can and believe that. And that's what happens when there's a sign and a wonder. You yeah. know what? It draws people. We've got a few minutes right? left, and I yeah. want us to pray for our viewers. There's, sure. The, and you can look into our, your camera. Okay. But let's pray for our viewers, because there's many that are tuned into the broadcast today. And they need a touch. There's many. Yeah. You know, very often when Joan and I just do a short prayer at the end of the program, I'm always amazed at how many words of knowledge start to flow in my heart, yeah. even persons' first names. And I see mm. in the spirit something that's affecting them. And what mm. that tells me is how God cares about every one of you mm. and knows exactly what you're going through. And the connector is faith. We have to have faith in his ability to do the supernatural. Yeah. So, Jamie, you just, just mm -hmm. share what you want in the camera. And like I said, we only have a few minutes left. But sure. And pray for those who are tuned into the broadcast. Sure. Okay. Yeah, I really felt like uh, as, as uh, you guys kind of warmed me up uh, to this, uh, the word of knowledge I was getting was arthritis. And, and I, f I, really f I really feel like uh, there's some people that are watching that, that uh, you've been plagued with arthritis and in fact I actually more specifically felt like the Lord was showing me that that uh, you actually went away somewhere and something happened and like you weren't at home and you went away somewhere and when you came back it's when it started and so what I, I'm just going to pray right now for you for this if that's you um, and if you have arthritis and we're going to pray for you right now as well so so first for the one that was away and then came back and got it I'm just going to say this so right now in the name of Jesus I curse the curse right now in Thank Jesus you, name Whatever that is, I curse that curse right now in Jesus' name. And I command, I command arthritis to bow to the name of Jesus. Mm. And I command it to go. I command all pain to leave in, in the name of Jesus right now. I command all calcium to, to uh, the, all the buildup to, uh, wow. to uh, dissolve in Jesus' name. And that, it be, that there would be normal function within the joints and in the body in Jesus' name. Mm. Yeah, wow. hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, yeah. Lord. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. Thank you you know, if you uh, are receiving ministry this way, just go ahead and call the prayer center. Uh, what often happens is that you receive a word of knowledge, you believe it, but then when you pray for someone, you, you're activating your faith and yeah. put it into place for mm -hmm. your healing. And by the way, if it doesn't happen immediately, Jamie just mentioned a lady that prayed the prayer four mm -hmm. times before her ear opened, is that you just continue to stand fastly 
declare what God wants to do in your life. Amen. You know, I, I just want to pray for somebody. You're an unbeliever. And, you know, Jesus loved praying for unbelievers. And he loved them seeing their miracle. And True. it usually brought them to him. For the most part, it did. And so I see a man sitting on his couch right now, and you're an unbeliever, and you're watching this, a little bit skeptical, but you have a major problem in your digestive system. Mm, well. And it's been there for mm. a long time, and you're, you've had a lot of fear over it because you're wondering what it is, what it is. They can't get to the bottom of it. You know what? Jesus wants to heal you right now. And so I pray for this man, and I thank you, Father, that you know every intricate part of his digestive system mm. and his body. Yeah. And Father, I pray that mm. you would cause every crooked yeah. place to become straight Amen. and everything that is out of order just to come back into order again right now. And Father, I thank you that you will heal this man for your glory and that it will bring yes. him to you because signs, wonders, and miracles open our yeah. eyes to the reality of Christ. Yeah. Thank you for that, Lord, yeah. in Jesus' name. And if that's you, call the prayer yeah. center and they'll pray with you some more. You know, John, often we run out of time on the program, but on the set every time, and we have some here, yeah. we have praise reports, people yeah. that have called in and said, this has happened, this has happened while mm -hmm. they watched the broadcast. And uh, again, I'm going to credit Jill Mattis, our prayer center coordinator, such a well-organized mm -hmm. team, people praying over every call, praying over you, praying yeah. for the partners. You know, it's really quite amazing. And following up, multiple times they follow up with these folks and pray them back. Pray for them as they call back. And we've been told that very few television ministries actually do this. Mm. And this is a Canadian, fully Canadian ministry. We're believing for our nation, standing Amen. for our nation. Yeah. That's why it's a good reason to stand with us as well. Amen. So, Jamie, um, uh, you travel and obviously do this when in churches. And uh, do, the, do the churches ever get back to you and say, wow, you know, these results? Tell, yes. tell us just very quickly in the last minute. Yeah, major. actually, this recent, uh, really recently, I did a healing school in, uh, at a church that didn't normally do healing stuff, right, in Calgary. And the following week, so we did it Saturday, and then, and then Sunday morning, I, all the people that did the school actually got to pray for people on Sunday. Mm. I didn't pray for anyone. I got the students <laughs> That's awesome. all to pray, right? That's awesome. And so then what happened was that the, the following week, three people on three different occasions the next week, Week, came into the church and church office and said, I, I, I heard that this church knows how to pray. And I, that, that's a miracle that, <laughs> that now the reputation of the church it, to the world, this is to the world, yeah. is that they know how to pray. Yeah. Wow. Isn't that wow. That's awesome. Isn't that yeah. great? That's awesome. Thank you, Jamie, for sharing <laughs> yeah. with us today. That's great. You know, these are good reports. Remember yeah. that Jesus never changed. He's the same yesterday, yeah. today, that's and right. forever. And that's what you're hearing today. The same Jesus of the Gospels, the same Jesus of the book of Acts yeah. is alive today and yeah. still doing the same stuff. Again, thank you for being <laughs> thank with you, us. Jamie. And thank you for being with us. Make sure you call the prayer center if you need to have a need. And remember this. God is good. All the time. And all the time. <laughs> God is good. <laughs> See you next time. <laughs> Bye-bye. This program is supported by viewers like you, and we thank you for your partnership. We want to hear from you. Send us your prayer requests, praise reports, and comments on the program. Be sure to visit our website for up-to-date information or get in touch with us by email or phone. And don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Dick and Joan are now available for conferences and events in your area. To book them for your event, call 587-425-5730 or email info at dickandjoan.com.